SpaceX has unexpectedly unveiled a strange new structure at the Massey site, tied to the Starship test program. Its sudden appearance has sparked intense speculation about its purpose and what it signals for the next phase of Starship testing. While activity accelerates on the ground, SpaceX is also sounding alarms in orbit. The company reports that a Chinese spacecraft recently passed dangerously close to a Starlink satellite, highlighting the growing risks of congestion and the rising challenge of safe operations in low Earth orbit. At the same time, SpaceX has set yet another landing record, reinforcing the reliability and maturity of its reusable launch systems. We break down all of these developments in today's episode of Great SpaceX. It's fair to say that without the B-18 incident, we would likely have already seen a more robust and revealing test of Starship. That setback temporarily slowed momentum, but it did not halt progress. In fact, it now appears that SpaceX may not need to wait much longer to demonstrate the next major step forward. S-39, or Ship-39, is nearing readiness, and all signs point to an intensive test campaign in the very near future. In the latest updates from Starbase, SpaceX has added fuel autogenous pressurization raceways to the stacking stand. These additions are widely believed to support the final assembly of S-39. This detail may seem minor at first glance, but it strongly suggests that SpaceX is preparing the infrastructure needed to handle the next phase of testing. These raceways are not installed casually. They are part of a deliberate effort to support advanced fueling and pressurization operations that are central to Starship version 3. According to the current schedule, S-39 will first undergo cryogenic testing. This is expected to occur either this week or next, assuming no unexpected delays. After completing cryogenic proof testing, the vehicle will return to the production site where its engines will be installed. Once engine installation is complete, S-39 will be transported back to Massey for static fire testing. This full test sequence is expected to culminate in early January next year, marking what could be one of the most comprehensive Starship ship-only tests to date. Because of this timeline, preparation for the test is absolutely critical. SpaceX has already taken several important steps in this direction. Previously, the company installed the SQD-V3 system at Massey. This upgrade alone signaled that more ambitious testing was coming. Now, recent images suggest that SpaceX is constructing an entirely new support structure to enable these upcoming tests. The images in question were created and published on X by the Chrome Kiwi team. Before diving into the analysis, it's worth acknowledging their work. These high-quality simulation images help the broader spaceflight community better understand what SpaceX may be building and why it matters. Their visualizations provide clarity where official information is limited, and they allow observers to track changes at Starbase with much greater precision. Turning back to the images themselves, we can see a new steel frame erected vertically next to the Starship test stand at Massey. The base of this structure is composed of a dense grid of smaller steel members, suggesting that it is designed to handle significant loads or stresses. When viewed from the side, the structure appears to have a D-shaped profile, while frontal views show a more rectangular outline. The frame is mounted on top of the test stand's existing support structure and is positioned close to the flame bucket, indicating a close relationship with engine testing operations. At the lower end, the frame extends downward and connects to two opposing legs of the test stand. This configuration likely provides lateral stability and resistance to vibration. Above the main vertical frame, another unusual steel structure is visible. This upper frame may serve as a mounting point for pipes, interfaces, or mechanical systems that have not yet been installed. Its purpose is not immediately obvious, but its presence suggests that this system is modular and still under construction. Which leads to the central question, what exactly is this new frame for? At first glance, the structure bears a strong resemblance to the BQD gantry at Pad 2. While the orientations are different, with the booster system arranged horizontally and this new structure oriented vertically, the conceptual similarity is hard to ignore. The BQD gantry serves as the mounting framework for hardware that manages fueling, pressurization, and other critical Critical interfaces for the Super Heavy booster. It's the backbone that supports all booster-related ground connections. If that analogy holds, then the new structure at Massey likely serves a similar role for Starship. 
Many observers speculate that it'll be used to test the physical and fluid connections between the vehicle and the SQD system, both before and after fuel transfer. This would represent a major step forward in ship-level testing, especially for static fire operations. These upgrades would significantly improve testing efficiency. Cryogenic testing would benefit from more realistic fuel configurations, while static fire testing would gain from more flight representative interfaces. However, static fire testing is likely the primary driver behind this new structure. Starship V3 introduces a number of substantial changes, particularly in the fuel injection system. With the introduction of Raptor 3 engines, operational pressures, flow rates, and thermal environments will change dramatically. Testing these systems in an integrated and realistic manner is essential. Beyond this basic and practical function, there's also more ambitious speculation surrounding the structure. Some believe it could play a role in testing, docking, and fuel transfer between Starship operations. If true, this would be a bold move and a clear signal that SpaceX is accelerating work on in in-space refueling. This idea gains credibility when considering the height of the structure, which is nearly as tall as the Starship vehicle itself. That height would allow it to interface with refueling ports located higher up on the ship. Notably, these new refueling points have already been observed on S-39, which is the first Starship V3 vehicle. It's likely that similar ports will be installed on future prototypes as well. If this interpretation is correct, then SpaceX is laying the groundwork now for refueling system development that is planned for next year. According to at least one source, these efforts could formally begin around June. Building the necessary ground test infrastructure in advance would allow SpaceX to continuously test and refine refueling concepts using V3 prototypes, starting with S-39. Naturally, this raises additional questions. If SpaceX intends to test docking and fuel transfer, would that involve two Starship prototypes at the same time? If so, how would they be positioned on the existing platform at Massey? How would the new support frame interact with two vehicles simultaneously? These questions suggest that the structure may not yet be complete. Visually, the current frame does not appear robust enough to handle all of these potential roles on its own. Additional reinforcement, bracing, or secondary structures may be added in the coming weeks. It's also possible that other oddly shaped components will begin appearing around Starbase as the system takes its final form. Form. As always, updated images from Chrome, Kiwi, and other observers will likely provide further clues. For now, the full purpose of this new system remains an open question. It may serve multiple functions over time, evolving as SpaceX's testing needs change. Whatever the case, it's clear that this is not a minor or cosmetic addition. It's part of a broader push to enable more advanced and more representative testing of Starship V3. While attention is focused on this new system, other areas of Starbase continue to make rapid progress. Activity at Starbase continues to accelerate. On December 13th, the aft section of B-19 was rolled into the Mega Bay, marking a key step toward integrating Raptor 3 engines on the next Super Heavy booster. Focus now shifts to the forward section, which will include hot staging hardware and upgraded grid fins, representing major advances over earlier designs. B-19's stacking pace has been notably rapid, with observers estimating progress far faster than B-18, underscore how much SpaceX has streamlined production and integration. Those efficiencies are also evident at the Gigabay site, where large steel frame modules are being installed to form a structure that will be taller than the existing megabays and capable of supporting multiple vehicles simultaneously. At the current pace, Gigabay could be ready for stacking operations in the second half of next year. Infrastructure growth is extending beyond vehicle assembly. At the self-fueling complex, critical motors for the air separation units were installed between December December 11th and the 13th, advancing Starbase toward on-site production of liquid oxygen and nitrogen. Even without active launches, progress across boosters, facilities, and propellant systems continues at a steady pace, laying the groundwork for Starship V3 flight tests and long-term operational scale. Now shifting our focus away from Starbase, there was a significant development in orbit involving SpaceX and a Chinese spacecraft. As orbital traffic increases, so do the risks. On December 9th, China launched a Kinetico-1 rocket from Jiuquan, 
deploying nine spacecraft. Shortly after, SpaceX reported that one of those objects passed within roughly 200 meters of Starlink satellite 6079 at about 560 kilometers altitude. The close approach was publicly flagged by Starlink engineering vice president Michael Nichols, who stated that no prior coordination or deconfliction was known to have taken place, calling the lack of data sharing one of the most serious risks in modern space operations. The Kinetica-1, a 30-meter solid-fueled rocket operated by CAS Space, prompted an official response. CAS Space acknowledged the incident, said it is investigating, and noted that its launches rely on ground-based space awareness systems to avoid known objects. The company added the event, if confirmed, occurred nearly 48 hours after payload separation and called for greater cooperation between spaceflight operators. The launch reportedly deployed six Chinese satellites along with spacecraft for the UAE, Egypt, and Nepal. Responsibility remains unclear. Space traffic management is complex, and SpaceX itself operates nearly 9,300 Starlink satellites. These satellites routinely perform autonomous avoidance maneuvers, with about 145,000 such actions in the first half of 2025 alone. However, not all spacecraft have comparable capabilities, and unshared trajectory data increases the risk of sudden close approaches. The concern is not hypothetical. A single collision could generate debris that triggers cascading impacts, a scenario, a scenario known as the Kessler Syndrome. As launch rates accelerate worldwide, this incident underscores a growing reality. Without stronger coordination and transparency, orbital safety will become increasingly difficult to maintain. Finally, we turn to a milestone that highlights SpaceX's continued dominance in launch and recovery operations. Nearly a decade after its first Falcon 9 landing, SpaceX reached another milestone on December 14th by recovering its 550th Falcon 9 booster. The booster in question, B-1093, launched 27 Starlink satellites from California and landed on the drone ship OCISLY in the Pacific, marking its ninth successful flight and recovery. This mission was SpaceX's 162nd Falcon 9 launch of 2025, and its 580th launch overall, underscoring the scale and reliability of its operations. With each recovery, SpaceX continues to reset the standard for rapid reusability, proving that even as Starship advances, Falcon 9 remains a cornerstone of its launch dominance. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, Curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.